एंड गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट्स एंड वेलकम बैक टू ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म दिस इज चांदनी स्वर्णकार एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कवर प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन एंड दिस इज आर फुल रिविजन सीरीज सो दिस इज आर सिक्स लेक्चर ऑन दिस सीरीज ओके यू कैन गेट माई लेक्चर्स एट नाइन पी एम ऑन अ डेली बेसिस बट वीडियो में आगे बढ़ने से पहले मैं आपको बता देती हूँ दिसंबर एग्जाम में जैरस लेने के लिए इस बात प्रिपेशन करना होगा उसके लिए ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन आपके लिए लेकर आया है इंग्लिश लिटरेचर का कम्प्लीट कोर्स इसमें आपको वीडियो लेक्चर्स मिलेंगे राइट right? जिसमें शॉर्ट एंड स्मार्ट वे के साथ आपके सारे कॉन्सेप्ट क्लियर हो जाएंगे इसके साथ ही आपको फुल नोट्स पी डी एफ फॉर्मेट में बल्कि आया जाएगा जिसे आप अपने मोबाइल लैपटॉप तो डाउनलोड करके पढ़ सकते हो इसके साथ आपको मॉक टेस्ट मिलेंगे जिसे एज इट इस क्वेश्चन एग्जाम में पूछे जाते हैं मॉक टेस्ट आपके फाइनल प्रोफेशन में बहुत हेल्प करता है तो गिवन कॉन्टैक्ट नंबर पर कॉन्टैक्ट करके आप इसे ज्वाइन कर सकते हो और सबसे अच्छी बात इस कोर्स की अदर यू गोइंग टू गेट कम्प्लीट पेपर वन कोर्स फॉर फी सो यू आर सेविंग थर्टी सिक्स हंड्रेड रुपीज है ना फ्री वीडियोज के एक्सेस के लिए ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन ऐप को आप फटाफट डाउनलोड कर सकते हो सो से समझाओगे यहाँ पे आपको सारे कोर्सेज की जानकारी यहाँ से मिल जाएगी सर्च बार में जाकर के कोर्स का नाम लिखोगे तो डायरेक्टली कोर्स का नाम लिखोगे तो कोर्स का ओवरव्यू आपके सामने आ जाएगा इसकी ड्यूरेशन इसकी फीस सब कुछ आपको मिल जाएगी ओके कंटेंट सेक्शन पे क्लिक करते हो तो यूनिट वाइज जो है आपको फोल्डर्स अवेलेबल मिलेंगे हर एक यूनिट में थ्योरी लेक्चर्स इवेलुएशन नोट्स मॉक टेस्ट एन आपको मिलेंगे इसके अलावा आपको कुछ भी पढ़ने की जरूरत नहीं है इसके साथ ग्लोबल अगर आप ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन पेड कोर्स को ज्वाइन करते हो तो आपको व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप में भी ऐड किया जाएगा जहाँ पे हर एक सेशन की पीडीएफ आप लोगों के साथ में प्रोवाइड करवाई जाएगी ओके नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट क्वेश्चन सो क्वेश्चन नंबर 144 द फर्स्ट द वेरी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन लेट्स टॉक अबाउट इट नाउ इन विच ईयर वर्स आर एल स्टिवेंसन ट्रेजर आई लैंड पब्लिश्ड ओके सी हैव टू आंसर दैट and we have already discussed so many times sara stevenson's treasure island and i have already told you that it was published in 1883 okay so the correct answer is 1883 and more about this particular work it's an adventurous novel adventurous novel okay and it's a coming of age novel of course coming of age novel and um Of course, it was written by Robert Louis Stevenson. That is all you need to remember. It was published in eighteen eighty three. So third one is the correct answer. Okay, moving on. Jonathan Bates, the Song of the Earth was published in. Okay, so the Song of the Earth was published in. Jonathan Bates wrote a particular work. The Song of the Earth was published in two thousand. Okay, so the correct answer is two thousand. But other works by Jonathan Bates was uh, the genius, the genius of Shakespeare, Shakespeare, and the cure of love. Sorry, the cure for love, the cure for love. Okay, so these two other works were written by Jonathan Bates, and two thousand major hit, the Song of the Earth, was published. One hundred forty-six question number. Francis Bacon, the advancement of learning, attempted to draw a distinction between two kinds of truth. So, before answering the question, let me tell you something about the advancement of learning. It was written by Francis Bacon, of course. The question is uh, itself mentioning that, and it was published in sixteen hundred five. And it has um, like the first study contains two parts. Okay, so the first study focuses on the importance of everyday learning. Okay. learning and its importance in everyday life okay so it's uh, focusing on that and the second part is focusing on um, how it can be improved so it was focusing on the improvement okay the first one is uh, focusing on uh, learning and the impact of learning or the importance of learning in daily life and the second one is uh, focusing on how it can be improved okay now it uh, the question is asking about two kinds of truth that the advancement of learning is uh, Uh, is actually mentioned so options are theological truth or scientific truth theological truth or aesthetic truth third aesthetic truth or objective truth or fourth one metaphysical truth or aesthetic truth so the correct answer is theological truth and scientific truth the first one is the correct answer okay moving on okay so the question number 147 The question is saying, "I shall be ambitious to have it said of me that I have brought philosophy out of closets and libraries, schools and colleges to dwell in clubs and assemblies at tea tables and in coffee houses." Who said these lines? 
the lines are like this i shall be ambitious to have it said of me that i have brought philosophy out of closets and libraries schools and colleges to dwell in clubs and assemblies at tea tables and in coffee houses these are the options whether samuel johnson dr samuel johnson of course joseph edison charles lamb and alexander pope who said this line think about it joseph edison said this line okay so the second one is the correct answer okay moving on dr johnson's dictionary of the english language was published in ye to bahut easy hai and so many times uh, in previous year question you can find this uh, questions on this particular dictionary of the english language by dr johnson डॉक्टर भी इनके नाम के आगे इसलिए लगाए ना क्योंकि इन्होंने डिक्शनरी लिखी थी एंड इट वॉज पब्लिश इन सेवनटीन हंड्रेड फिफ्टी फाइव आई ऑल्सो डू रिमेंबर दैट सेवनटीन हंड्रेड फिफ्टी फाइव ओके सो डू रिमेंबर एंड डोंट फू गैर इट मूविंग ऑन एन एस एन द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ ह्यूमन एक्शन वॉज रिटन बाय एन एस एन द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ ह्यूमन एक्शन वॉज रिटन बाय फर्स्ट आई नीड टू टेल यू हेयर इज दैट इट वॉज पब्लिश इन एटीन हंड्रेड फाइव and the options are charles lamb jean uh, jack rosso william godwin or william hazlitt which is the correct answer william hazlitt william hazlitt wrote an essay on the principles of human action and that was published in 1805 okay moving on see here a valediction for bidding morning is written by here you will get confused two writers um have written this particular work okay a poem you can say so a valediction for bidding morning is written by of course john dun aapko pehle se pata hoga and uh, but iske alawa bhi ek writer ne likha hai john dun ki jo valediction for bidding morning thi it was published in 1633 aur wo pure collection mein published hoti hai jiska naam tha songs and sonnets What is the name of the collection? Songs and sonnets. Okay, and it's a metaphysical poem. Metaphysical poem. I hope you all know what is metaphysical poem. It was a metaphysical poem. Okay, but another writer that uh, wrote this particular work was Henry Nail Rich. The same with the same title. Okay, and that was published in nineteen hundred seventy. Look at the difference of the ages, like the years. Okay, so here the A and C is the correct answer. Okay, the option A and C. Moving on, which of the following two poems are linked with each other in terms of form? In terms of what? In terms of form. So uh, let's discuss the options. First option, the last ride together. The last ride together is a work by Robert Browning. Robert Browning, and it was published in eighteen hundred fifty-five. That I need to remember. I do remember, and it's a dramatic monologue. Dramatic monologue. Okay. The Nullius was also written by not also. It was written by Tennyson. It's also a dramatic monologue. The kind of an example of dramatic monologue. Okay. second upon appleton house calling to my lord uh, fairfax was written by whom hmm and rio marvel by whom and rio marvel and uh, see it was written for thomas fairfax it was written for thomas fair fax and it has 97 stanzas 97 what 97 stanzas and each of eight line octosyllabic each of eight line octosyllabic and in what form in iambic tetrameter iambic tetrameter okay and it's an example of country house poem country house poem so what is country house poem basically yahan pe kya hota na author jo hai compliment kar raha hota hai ek wealthy patron ko aur ya to uske uh, friend ko 
by describing uh, of his country house uski country house ko describe karte karte jo hai us way se uh, uski wealthy patron ko ya uski friend ko compliment kar raha hota hai agar kisi poem mein to hum use country house poem kehte hain to upon appleton house calling to my uh, landlord lord fairfax jo hai country house poem ka example hai theek hai aur ise thomas fairfax ke liye likha gaya tha 97 stanzas mein octa syllabic में एवरी लाइक आफ्टर एट लाइन्स रिपीट होती है वो और आई एम बिग टेट्रामीटर में है ठीक है इट ऑफ एट लाइन्स देन टू पैन हस्ट लेट मी क्लियर दिस फर्स्ट ओके सो द फोर्थ वन द पैन हस्ट वॉज रिटन बाय होम बेन जॉनसन ओके सो इट्स अक्सटीन सिक्सटीन वर्क एंड इट इज पब्लिश बाय Uh, in 1616 and uh, it's also a country house poem so country house poem okay and uh, it was written in rhyming couplets rhyming couplets and one more thing that it was following iambic pentameter do remember this information because it's very important for you to know and to memorize and the last one the west land of course you all know that it was a kind of a dramatic monologue because it somewhere you'll read the west land you'll find somewhere uh, uh, on specific areas it is following dramatic monologue but overall we cannot say that it is a dramatic monologue it was written by t s eliot 1920 and a lot of times i have discussed this so don't forget it it was published in 1922 so many times they'll ask you this questions so the only common uh, forms two works are following c and d okay so upon appleton house to my landlord uh, to my land sorry to my lord fairfax and the uh, fourth one to penhurst okay so c and d is the correct answer okay whether you will write it like this or write it like this okay both are correct moving on which of the following poems are written by alexander pope so absalom and akitophel is not written by uh, alexander pope it was written by whom john dryden okay so let me tell you about alexander pope's work uh he wrote the rape of the lock uh which is very important for you to cover then dancier of course it was written by alexander pope then uh, moral essays is also written by alexander pope then ronge hill was not written and copus hill but um, an essay on criticism was also written by by alexander pope okay then moral essays is also there because i have already mentioned here yeah so gronger hill who wrote this work uh, john dyer it's not dyer it's dyer okay and cooper's hill was written by denham there is a writer called denham d e n h a m okay denham so i hope you all know the correct answer Uh, epsilon negative was written by john dryden and this is not written by alexander pope or this is also not written by alexander pope so a and b is the correct answer a and b is the correct answer okay moving on which of the following are the plays written by robert green first you have to find out that who wrote these works okay so the famous chronicle of king edward the king edward the first who wrote this particular work George Peel who wrote it George Peel okay Alphonsus who wrote it of course Robert Green so isliye maine pehle bataya tha university weeks jitne bhi hai na unke works ko aapko yaad rakhna bahut zaruri hai A Moon for the Miss Beaton who wrote Eugen sorry Eugen O Neil okay the old wife tale who wrote this Arnold Bennett Okay Arnold Bennett The King of Aragon who wrote it Robert Greene Robert Greene so ab to aapko pata chal raha hai ki kaun se work kisne likha hai to hame pata hai B 
and E is the correct answer. Okay, so B and E are the words that is written by Robert Greene. So B and E will be the correct answer. Okay, moving on. Which of the following two plays are written by W. B. Yeats, William Butler Yeats? Okay, so let me start from the downwards. The Plague and the Stars. Who wrote this? It's a work by C. No Cashier. Okay, and the Countless Catherine. Who wrote this? It's a work by W. B. Yeats. So first thing you got, then Silver Tashi. Who wrote this? Uh, of course, C. Woon, C. No Cashi. The same writer. Okay, C. No Cashi. Time and the Conways. Who wrote this? There is a writer J. B. Priestley. Even if you don't remember some of the writers, it's perfectly fine because elimination technique ही basically आपको use करनी है जहाँ पे आपको options eliminate करके answer जल्दी पता करना है ठीक है The Land of Heart's Desire was of course written by W. B. Yeats. So uh, we got two words A and D. It's the correct answer. Okay, moving on. Which of the following works have not been written by Thomas Carlyle? So, uh, Hoodie Brush, which uh, Samuel Butler ne likha hai. So, I have already discussed this particular work. So, if you remember, it's a very good thing. If you don't remember, then do it again. Then, of human bondage, which we have also discussed, this is Somerset Maugham's work. Which work is Somerset Maugham's work? So, two options have also been eliminated. And you have to find out that Thomas Carlyle's works are not in the same way. So, E and C, of course, are not in the same way. And the French Revolution and of Heroes and Hero Worship is Thomas Carlyle's work. So, we have to eliminate this option. And we have to focus on the R and the Man. And the R of the Man, of course, is not a work by Thomas Carlyle. Even if you don't remember the particular writer, I'll tell you. But you have to understand that if Thomas Carlyle's work is not in the same way, then it will be another work. So, C. D and E will be the correct answer. Okay, so let me tell you the writer Harriet Harriet uh, Martineau. Okay, Marty N U N E A U. Okay, this is the spelling, and these are the writers. So the correct answer is C D E. Right, moving on. Which of the following are written by George Peel? So, we have covered some questions in the first question. So, I hope it will be easy for you to identify. Okay. So, the famous chronicle of King Edward I, it was written by Peel. A moon for the misbegotten. We have discussed this. Eugen O'Neill. Okay. Then, the arrangement of Paris was also written by Peel, George Peel. The Scottish history of James the Fourth. Who wrote this? We have discussed this earlier. Robert Green. Who wrote it? Robert Green. And the old wife's tale. Arnold Bennett. Okay. Arnold what? Arnold Bennett. So the correct answer is A, of course, and C. So A and C is the correct answer. Great, moving on. Which of the following are the novels written by John Steenbach? Just see. There are how many questions are very simple. You just need to remember the writer's work and you can find out the correct answer, right? So which of the following are the novels written by John Steenbach? The Necked and the Dead. It's a Meller work. Norman, Norman Meller. The Grapes of Wrath. Who wrote it? Of course, John Steenbach. So, J and S. East of Eden. Who wrote it? J, John and John Steenbach. To Kill a Mockingbird. It's a very famous work. I hope you all know that. If you don't know, I don't know how you're going to appear in the exam. So, Harper Lee. And Canary Raw. Who wrote it? 
of course john steenback so this three works are written by john steenback b c and e are the correct answer okay hmm moving on match list 1 to list 2 तो लिस्ट वन यहाँ पे आपको ब्लड येलो बाय फ्लेगम ब्लैक बाइल दिया है एंड यहाँ पे देखिए एक बात आपको ध्यान में रखनी है कि देर इज अ वर्क एवरी मैन इन हिज ह्यूमर एवरी मैन इन हिज ह्यूमर एंड दैट इज रिटन बाय बेन जॉनसन सो वहाँ पे उन्होंने फोर फ्लूड्स मेंशन किए हैं आपको याद रखना है कि कौन से फ्लूड किस पर्टिकुलर मनस्थिति और स्टेट ऑफ माइंड से एसोशिएट करते हैं ओके सो ब्लड जो है सेंगविन से करता है सेंगविन यू जस्ट नीड टू रिमेंबर या दैट इज इट सेंगविन सो द सेकंड वन ओके येलो बाइल जो है कॉलरिक कॉलरिक द फोर्थ वन कॉलरिक से एसोसिएटेड है फ्लैगम फ्लैगम किससे एसोसिएटेड है ऑफ कोर्स फ्लैगमेटिक इट्स इजी टू आइडेंटिफाई ओके सो द फर्स्ट वन एंड ब्लैक बाइल ब्लैक बाइल क्या ब्लैक बाइल इज एसोसिएटेड विद मेलेंकली द थर्ड वन ओके सो ए विथ टू B with four, then C with one, and D with the third one. This is the correct match. Okay, moving on. Question number one hundred fifty-nine. Match list one with list two. First line: Some are born great; others achieve greatness. Some are Born great and other achieve greatness. From where this line has been taken from? Twelfth night. Four. Okay. Then, love looks not with the eyes but with the mind, and therefore is winged, cupid, painted, blind. Love looks not with the eyes but with the mind, and therefore is winged, cupid, painted, blind. This line. Is from a midsummer's night dream, third one. Okay, then ill deeds is doubled with an evil word. Ill deeds is doubled with an evil word. This is the line from the comedy of errors, the second one. And of course, the last one will go with the first one, the tempest. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. So A with the Fourth one, then uh, B with the third one, C with the second, and D with the first one. It's like we are coming from the up to down. Okay, moving on. Choose the correct chronological sequence in which the following texts were published. First, you need to find out the publishing year, or before, if you can find out the writer, that is uh, very well. Equipped, and that is that will show your uh, command over the writer's works and works publishing here. Okay, so the Tower is written by W. B. Eats, and it was published in nineteen hundred twenty-eight. And because of this particular work, na Nobel Prize उन्होंने जीता है. Sorry, not because of this particular work. He got the Nobel Prize in nineteen hundred twenty-three. And it was published in nineteen twenty-eight. Then the Hind and the Panther, of course, a work of John Dryden, and it was published in sixteen hundred eighty-seven. Then the Wild Swans at Cool. It was published by W. B. Yeats. It's a work by W. B. Yeats, and it was published in nineteen hundred seventeen. Mac Flecknoe is also a work by Dryden, and it was published in when. Sixteen hundred seventy-eight. The Witch Wedding, of course, it's a work by Philip Larkin. Philip Larkin's work is this, and it was published in nineteen hundred sixty-four. So the option will be like this: E, then A, then um, then C. Wait. C, then eighty seven, eighty one hundred seventeen. Okay, uh, D, and then B. B, D, C, A, E. This will be the correct answer, right? 
मूविंग ऑन चूज द करेक्ट लॉजिकल सीक्वेंस इन विच द फॉलोइंग टेक्स आर पब्लिश ओके ओ दिस क्वेश्चन ये रिपीट हो चुका है गैरेट अरेंज द फॉलोइंग इन अकॉर्डिंग विद द विद द ईयर्स ऑफ बर्थ यू डोंट हैव टू डू दैट विद द ईयर्स ऑफ बर्थ बिकॉज देखिए बहुत सारे राइटर्स हैं ना किसी किसी पर्टिकुलर एज से एसोशिएटेड हैं तो यहाँ पे कंफ्यूज होने की जरूरत नहीं है बट दिस राइटर्स आर वेरी मच रिलेटेड और इन सिमिलर ईयर्स यू नीड टू फाइंड आउट जॉर्ज हॉबर्ट फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड नाइन्टी थ्री टू सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड थर्टी थ्री डाइड इन सिक्सटीन थर्टीन एंड बॉर्न इन फिफ्टीन नाइन्टी थ्री देन एडमिन बेसिकली फिफ्टीन फिफ्टी टू टू फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड नाइन्टी फिलिप सिडनी वॉज बॉर्न इन फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड दो साल बाद उनका जन्म होता है फिफ्टीन फिफ्टी फोर टू एंड फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड एटी सिक्स जॉन डन क्योंकि इनके बाद ही इनका जन्म होता है फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी टू टू सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड थर्टी वन एंड ऑलिवर गोल्स में तो ऑफकोर्स सेवनटीन के टाइम पे सेवनटीन ट्वेंटी एट टू सेवेंटीन सेवेंटी फोर यू कैन सी बी विल कम फर्स्ट देन सी देन डी देन ए बी सी डी ए एंड ई विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर ओके यू कैन सी एंड वेरी विजिबल फाइंड द क्रोनोलॉजिकल ऑर्डर ऑफ पब्लिकेशन ऑफ द गिवन वर्क्स सो जस्ट इमेजिन द क्रोनोलॉजिकल ऑर्डर ऑफ क्वेश्चन दे आर आस्के Just see it once. So Darwin's Charles Darwin's uh, Origin of Species was published in eighteen hundred fifty nine. I've done this, uh, um, I think, before some days. Macaulay's Minute was, or Macaulay's uh, essay on Milton. Minute was very famous, but he also wrote an essay on Milton, and that was uh, published in eighteen hundred twenty five. Then Stevenson's Treasure Island, we have already discussed, so eighteen eighty three. Browning's Pauline, uh, it's not a very famous work, but uh, you have to remember that eighteen thirty three is the publishing year. And Old Wife's Tale, uh, we have discussed this so many times in this session. It uh, it was published in nineteen hundred eight. You can see the this B, then D, then A. then c and e is the correct chronology okay e this is not f f is not here moving on find the chronological order of the writers in terms of their years of birth years of birth now here even if you don't know the years of birth you don't have to find out uh, gem uh, william mackay stacker is from victorian age then jane austen uh, is from romantic one Henry Fielding, Enlightenment Age, then James M. Berry and Richard Doddridge Blackmore. We are confused, but we'll uh, go through the years. So Jane Austen uh, was born in seventeen hundred seventy-five, and she died in eighteen 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 hundred seventeen. Okay. Then Henry Fielding uh, was born in seventeen hundred seven, and died in seventeen hundred fifty-four. Before Jane Austen. And James M. Berry uh, was born after Jane Austen, of course, so eighteen sixty to nineteen hundred thirty-seven. Then Richard Doddridge Blackmore was born in before James M. Berry, so it was eighteen twenty-five to nineteen hundred. Born in nineteen hundred. Then William Mackay Stacker was also born from Richard Doddridge Blackmore and James M. Berry, so it was eighteen eleven to eighteen sixty-three. You can see here that will go with the first one B, then A, then E, then D, and then C. It's the correct chronology. Okay, the correct chronology is B A E D C. Moving on, and for this kind of question, now you need to remember some of the very famous writers' uh, birth time or death time as well. so that you can answer this questions very easily okay so but you don't need to focus a lot there then find the chronological order of the writers of the period they belong to so period ke hisab se aapko identify karna hai so here here matthew arnold 
was from okay so matthew arnold uh, is from victorian age okay so victorian age then comes modern and then postmodern francis bacon is from elizabethan age elizabethan age john dryden is from where restoration restoration age okay charles lamb is from romantic age then richard steel is from enlightenment age enlightenment age so here uh, elizabethan uh, age will come first so it means that d will come first then after rest uh, elizabethan age then uh, restoration will come so c will be there because john dryden is there then enlightenment age so a will be there because richard steel is from enlightenment age then after that enlightenment age romantic age will come so romantic age uh, b charles lamb and then e of course matthew one or victorian one so here elizabethan age restoration age enlightenment age romantic age and victorian age so d c a b e is the correct answer okay d c a b e is the correct answer moving on huh Find the chronological order of publication of Charles Dickens' novel. तो मैं पहले बता देती हूँ ये जो question है इसको drop कर दिया गया था कि somewhere there was a confusion. तो options जितने भी थे ना वो correct हो नहीं पा रहे थे Even if the person is trying to um, remember the correct chronology. Okay, so David Copperfield was published in 1850. एंड चार्ल्स डिकन्स के works के publishing ये बहुत important होते हैं and even the characters are very important. Bleak House was published in 1852 pick pick papers was published in 1837 dombey and son was published in 1848 and oliver twist is a kind of a, a long period uh, it takes so 1837 to 1839 okay so first we'll cover c then a hamara aayega then for b then e then d okay so this is going to be our correct chronology but but options mein aisa koi option tha hi nahi okay correct wala jo tha wo tha hi nahi is wajah se jo hai puri question ko hi drop kar diya gaya tha moving on find the chronological order of publication of the given works so you have to find out that so see here Locke's Human Understanding was published in 1689. Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, I hope you all remember, 1678. C. Pepys's Diary was published in 1660. ये तो बहुत common है. Hobbes' Leviathan जो है 1651 में published कराई गई है. And Boswell's Life of Johnson जो है 1791 को published कराई गई है. Okay. So the correct chronology will be B. First, uh, then C, then then D, then E and A. This is going to be our correct chronology. Do check it once. Okay. Moving on. Okay. So the question is: When nature prompted and no law denied, promiscuous use of concubine and bride. Then Israel's monarch, after heaven's own heart, his vigorous arm did variously impart to wives, slaves, to wives and slaves. So the lines are: When nature prompted and no law denied, promiscuous use of concubine and bride. Then Israel's monarch, after heaven's own heart, his vigorous arm did variously impart to wives and slaves. So options are: Absalom and Achitophel, Colin, a poem. Mac Plecno a song for a Saint Cecilia's day or Alexander Feast these are the works from John Dryden and aapko batana hai kaun sa correct answer hai jahan se ye work uh, is kisi work se ye line li gayi hai okay so the correct answer is absalom and achitophel colin a poem absalom and achitophel se bahut sare titles bante hain so don't get confused ek aisa bhi title hai absalom comma achitophel okay so don't get confused some other writers wrote that work So it is a work by John Dryden. 
एंड ये जो लाइन है वो यहीं से ली गई है इसी पर्टिकुलर वर्क से ओके मूविंग ऑन सी विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग पोइम्स इज रिटर्न बाई ऑलिवर गोल्ड स्मिथ तो यहाँ पे मैंने पहले ही बताया था आप कन्फ्यूज नहीं हो सकते हो कि ए लगा है या क्या लगा है ठीक है सो यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर द होल टाइटल इन अ वेरी स्पेसिफिक मैनर और डिजर्टेड विलेज है और डिजर्टेड विला है और दो डिजर्टेड विलेज है और और डिजर्टेड सिटी है सो आई ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दिस सो दो डिजर्टेड विलेज है हमने अभी कुछ स्लाइड्स uh, uh, पहले ही ये कवर किया है सो दर्ड वन इज द करेक्ट आंसर ओके ओके सो द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज रॉबर्ट बर्न्स वॉज बॉर्न एन वेर ही वॉज बॉर्न सो स्कॉटलैंड इंग्लैंड आयरलैंड और अमेरिका वेन यू रीड अबाउट रॉबर्ट बर्न्स ना सो दिन यू नोट डाउन द नोट्स और राइट डाउन समथिंग रिलेटेड रॉबर्ट बर्न फाइंड आउट स्कॉटलैंड इज द करेक्ट आंसर ओके ही वॉज बॉर्न इन स्कॉटलैंड द फर्स्ट वन इज द करेक्ट आंसर देन मूविंग ऑन Who among the following characters personifies necessity in P.V. Shelley's Prometheus Unbound? Who among the following characters personifies necessity in P.V. Shelley's Prometheus Unbound? So, कौन सा ऐसा character है जो personify करता है necessity को P.V. Shelley के Prometheus Unbound में? Whether it is Prometheus, whether it is uh, Demogorgon, or Jove, or Zeus. So, the correct answer जो necessity को uh, personify करता है, that is the second one, Domi. Demo Gorgon. Okay, so second one is the correct answer. Moving on. Who among the following, after watching the performance of William Shakespeare's play, *A Midsummer Night's Dream*, observed that it is the most insipid, ridiculous play that I have ever, I ever saw in my life. Uh, how somebody could say this? But uh, one writer. Uh, had said this about Midsummer's Night Dream and which is uh, William Shakespeare's play. Okay, so इतने बड़े औरे पे अगर कोई writer है and to insult that person, uh, you have to have guts and knowledge, है ना? So who among the following, after watching the performance of William Shakespeare's play A Midsummer's Night Dream, observed that it is the most insipid, ridiculous play that I ever saw in my life? Who is the character? Like who is the writer? John Evelyn? Samuel Pepys, John Dryden, or Robert Greene. So Samuel Pepys was the great person who actually observed that and said these lines about Midsummer's Night Dream, and that was written by William Shakespeare. Okay, Shakespeare's it's Shakespeare. The last one. Name the playwright who wrote the play Epicene or the Silent Woman. This is very easy because when you will read Ben Jonson, you will find out Epicene or the Silent Woman, which is written by him, and the story is very interesting. So, uh, but except Ben Jonson, you need to cover William Congreve, Thomas Kyd, and Thomas Farquhar as well because the works uh, they have they have been written. So they are also very important. Okay, so you need to cover them. So Ben Jonson is the correct answer. Now thank you so much we'll meet in the next lecture we'll cover some of the very important and uh, interesting questions um of british literature we'll cover that then we'll start the previous year questions of literary theory or criticism so that we'll cover that as well so all the very best and keep on revising things okay thank you